How's it going everyone? Back today with another video. Slightly different one yet again today. I'm going to be doing another kind of 10 list if you will, but this one isn't going to be like ranked in order or anything like that. Um, just it will be kind of impossible to rank these ones. Um, today I'm going to be looking and talking about 10 discographies that I will never ever be completing on physical format. So this could be for many different reasons, um, but I'll go into those as I'm going through. As I say, I picked 10. Kind of the first ones that came to mind are the ones that I've used here, um, mainly because they must be the ones that like stand out as being kind of, I guess the worst or most uncompletable, if that is a word, if it wasn't, it is now. Um, so yeah, looking forward to getting into this one. Thought this would be fun. I thought you guys could have some interesting takes as well. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing some of the comments after this one. And of course, the mandatory, you're a fucking idiot. What are you talking about comments? They never cease. Um, first of all, what's going on in the background? Can't remember if I've shown this one before, but this one is Coffins with the Fleshland. So this is their fourth full-length album from back in uh, 2013. Um, this is gnarly Japanese death doom. Um, very sluggish, lots of really nice sounding, kind of crusty, D-beat sort of drum work going on. Guitars are really kind of sawing, grating, chunky, nasty sounding. I find the production fuzzy on this one, or at least the guitar tone's very fuzzy. Not sure if that is down to the uh, production, because the... Um, the kind of trashy hi-hats and crash cymbals that you can hear in the background do kind of um, become trashier in that kind of mix of the production and everything as well. So who knows? I'm not a fucking sound tech or whatever. But uh, yeah, this thing's great. It is sluggish. If you don't like things like slow for the most part, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. Uh, it doesn't get too much quicker than this sort of DB mid-paced crawl. But uh, yeah, fucking love this thing, man. So good. The Fleshland by Coffins. Absolutely love that shit. I haven't actually put these in order um, of what I've got written down here. So I'm just going to try and count them. As I go along, you know how good I am at that. Um, by the way, before I get into this, how fucking sharp is this Black Magic SS shirt that Creep Purple Records have just shipped out to me uh, over the moon with it. Don't get many shirts that aren't black. Um, uh, so yeah, very, very happy with that. They sent me a couple of stickers actually as well, so I'll just give these a quick show on camera. I know how you nerds love your merch kind of bits and bobs. Very, very cool. That is indeed what's on the front cover here. Um, it says the fire burns forever. Spread the black ash in the pit. Hail Satan. Hail. Hail. So that's what's on the back of this t-shirt. Uh, it is a kind of four-sided thing with a little bit of print here and there. And a very cool kind of Electric Wizard-inspired Creep Purple Records sticker there as well. Very, very cool. Of course, uh, Dope Thrones album cover on the front. Awesome stuff. Now that that's out of the way, first band I've picked was... I don't know. I don't know why this band came to mind, but I do have my reasons for never wanting to complete this discography. Um... That band is Cannabis Corpse out of the USA. Um, so this is a death metal band, of course, writing all original material, but their entire shtick is they are kind of um, turning existing kind of classic death metal titles into kind of weed themed titles. So for example, we've got Chapel of Bulls instead of Chapel of Ghouls of uh, Morbid Angel, Gateways to Inhalation instead of Gateways to Annihilation, also by uh, Morbid Angel, Blaze of Torment. I mean, you don't need me to tell you who that is yet again. But yeah, as I say, all original music. This is my favorite of theirs, I would say. And I did really enjoy a two Tube of the Resonated. Again, you don't need me to tell you. Um, however, this is a band where like the music as they've gone on, in my opinion, they just haven't had that kind of uniqueness enough to kind of want to pick up the rest of their stuff. None of it's bad by any means, but um, yeah, like Left Hand Pass and um, what was the one after that? Nug So Vile. Um, surely Bong So Vile would have been better, but anyway, I'm not the expert. 
Um, yeah, those ones just kind of didn't stand out to me. I didn't find them super interesting. Um, the weed thing kind of got a little bit old. It's like the... It's funny for a bit, but then it kind of gets a little bit just like... I want some good tunes. I don't really care about the fucking marijuana jokes. But um, yeah... This album's really good. As I say, Tube of the Resonate is really good. I do own that one on CD, but uh, I don't feel the need to pick up any more from this band. Um, it's pretty much just a bit of a gimmick. Uh, some of their tunes are really, really fucking good. Not to be kind of a... You shouldn't turn your nose up at them. However, yeah, I mean, standard modern death metal um, inspired by the obvious classics. So, yeah, next up, uh, number nine, I guess, but uh, we're not doing this in order if you happened to like scrub my bullshit ramblings at the beginning the next band i picked is quite an obvious one one of the first that came to mind mainly because of the huge stylistic kind of change after this one so this is their fourth album philosophum of course um and you can kind of hear on this one there is an enormous amount of attention put on the kind of ambient stuff that would come after this you wouldn't ditch the black metal entirely after this however you could really see where his passions lay, he really wanted to do the ambient stuff, and that's what he did, which, fair enough, do what you want musically, um, you're under no obligation to stick with what you were doing, um, but yeah, for me, the first four albums are all I need to own, I will never ever buy the kind of uh, ambient stuff, it just doesn't interest me, I know it'll be one of those things that I'll kind of spin once, think, why the fuck did I buy this, and I'll stick it on the shelf, never to be spun again um perhaps an overstatement maybe again at some point but just there's no need to like own them at all uh, if i feel even remotely curious i'll stick on a stream um but yeah the early stuff's good shit as you already know you don't need me to tell you that quite an obvious one because there's lots of albums that i wouldn't want to pick up as a result of the stylistic change unlike this band so this is Carcass, of course, with um, torn arteries. I thought uh, the spine had torn there, um, just as I said the word. But um, yeah, this is a band where, again, I don't need to own everything. Um, Recomputrefaction, of course, Symphony is a Sickness, uh, Necroticism, Heartwork, um, Surgical Steel, all very good. Torn arteries, very good. I own all of those. However, I do not ever intend to own Swan Song. That one just lost me a little bit. It almost felt like a bit of a parody album. Um, there's a bit too much of the kind of death and roll stuff going on. This album is definitely kind of leaning towards that sort of style. And there are kind of elements on this that are on Swan Song as well. But just, I don't know, like rotting in the free world and shit like that. It just came across as a big joke. It's just not too serious. I hate the artwork as well, much as I do this one, to be honest, uh, with the kind of Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner, whoever you want to kind of, um, whichever, they've got the same face, I guess, don't they? Um, but yeah, like on the front cover, I, I just find that, I don't know, I, I don't find it very, it's not very death metal, it doesn't scream the stuff that I want to want to kind of listen to. Carcass has never kind of had great artwork, in my opinion. I hate the um, heartwork artwork. Um, as I have clearly expressed many times. Um, but yeah, the, the music is what I'm talking about here and that it just loses it for me. I, I don't like it. There are bits that I like, like don't get me wrong, it's not all utterly horrendous, but um, yeah, I have no interest in owning it. Frankly, if I hadn't bought this on the actual day it came out, I probably wouldn't have picked this one up either. But um, yeah, it's a fun spin from time to time. Um, but yeah, like... If I'm not even going to spin Torn Arteries, I would never spin uh, Swan Song. So, there you go. That was number eight. No, it wasn't. That was number... Yes, it was. It's going well already. Next up, I've got perhaps another obvious one, but I do know a lot of people that do like the latest stuff of this band. Uh, but I've gone with Bathory here. Um, so, of course, Swedish kind of first wave black metal. Um... After Bloodfire Death, which is the album after this one, they kind of went in a sort of Viking sort of um, direction. And whilst I do quite like the music, I find the vocals incredibly distracting. It's like clean sung, or at least on, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, something ice, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like Hammerheart's where it started and it kind of, 
I don't know, they're weird, distractingly grating, I find out. They're not good, clean sung vocals. They're almost kind of chanted. It's almost like a prideful thing, and it does kind of give you the aura of that folky Viking sort of uh, theme. But I just want the snarls, I want the rasp, I want the grit, and I want the black metal sort of uh, sounding stuff like we got on here under the sign of the Black Mark. Um, which, I mean, along with the debut, is some of my favourite black metal of all time, to be honest. But um, yeah, Bathory, I will never complete their discography. I know that for a fact. I think even if I was bought those albums, I would probably sell them or get rid of them or they'd just sit and gather dust, man. Next up, I've got the band that everybody must think of first, every metalhead at the very least. Metallica. Um, do I really need to say any more than that? Uh, there is absolutely no need to own anything after the Black Album, in my opinion. And even still, I'm not a huge fan of Master of Puppets, and I'm not a huge fan of the um, And Justice For All, mainly because of the lack of bass. It's a well-written album, but what have you done there? And then the Black Album, I mean, it's okay. I own it, I've got it on CD. But after that, it just gets kind of depressingly bad. It just turns into utterly horrific sort of cock rock nonsense um like load reload even lulu which is inarguably one of the worst albums i've ever heard saint anger which i don't think is as bad as everyone says it is it's just that horrific kind of brutal death metal kind of tinny snare drum sound uh, that is just hilarious um yeah just everything after that was kind of them wanting to recapture the kind of thrashier stuff from ride the lightning and uh kill em all um, but they just fall flat on their face. It seems non-authentic, unauthentic. I never know which word. Who gives a fuck? You're not judging me on my dictionary um, vocabulary. Dictionary vocabulary. That's what we're going with. Um, but yeah, Metallica, I don't want to waste your time fucking talking about that band because you just know the good shit. And I mean, you can like bits after the Black Album, but you can't deny that it's fair enough that I don't wish to own any of that stuff. Next up is another band that kind of changed their style, kind of with this album, to be honest. This is Emperor out of Norway, of course. This is their sophomore anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. And this is kind of where they started going off in their kind of more progressive-y sort of experimental sort of um, path. To be honest, I've barely even managed to listen to any of it, uh, like kind of any of the stuff after this. I've heard snippets. I've kind of started albums and never really finished them, uh, to my knowledge at least. Um, I've just felt no reason nor need to go to them and check them out, because I feel like I'd be wasting my time. It got pretentious, it got a little bit pretentious with this one, just getting a bit more cleaned up, a bit more on the symphonic side, and just, it was kind of edging towards what it would turn into. I do like this album an awful lot, but um, like the early EPs, demo, um, and the debut album are where it's at for me. It's the best stuff by a mile. Um, this isn't quite as depressing as like the Metallica downfall, for example. However, it's still a discography that I will never, ever feel the need to complete. Absolutely unnecessary. Emperor. Brilliant uh, kind of early shit, as I say. But uh, yeah, keep that other stuff out of my face. I'd much rather listen to Emperor's latest stuff than I would uh, Metallica's latest stuff, though, put it that way. Next up, another band that came straight to mind for some reason, but this is Cryptopsy, of course, and this is their sophomore non so vile. I show it all the time. Um, one of my favourite albums of all time by some distance. This was their last great album and their last even worthy of being in my collection album that they did. After this, it got a bit weird. They started adding elements of deathcore. It got a bit chuggy and breakdowny. And um, yeah, they just never captured the magic of this nor the debut album, uh, Blasphemy Made Flesh. This is some of the most unique, impressive, um, brutal, unnerving, terrifying death metal to come out in the uh, sort of late 90s. Um, and yeah, just they never captured the essence of this nor understood what it was that made these albums great partially down to lord worm's vocals i know he came back for one album i don't know what which one it was 
I want to say something about Forsaken King, but I could be wrong. I'm not very familiar. I've heard all I need to hear from the stuff after this, and it just disinterests me. Production's weird. Sounds kind of like that point between the sort of very late 90s and the early 2000s where production just... They tried to polish it up and it sounded like overproduced and tinny. That's kind of the, the vibe I got from it. Again, I'm no Cryptopsy expert. The new album doesn't even sound unique enough to call it a Cryptopsy album as far as I'm concerned, as far as these albums are concerned. Um, I'm just not interested anymore, man. Using the band name just to kind of maintain their train. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, whatever. Do what you will to earn your keep. But um, yeah. For me, Non So Vile was the last worthy thing out of the Cryptopsy camp. Fucking love the drumming on this album and just in this band in general. Next up, yet another Norwegian black metal band that kind of um, changed its style but not quite as drastically as uh, Burzum, for example. Um, this is Dark Throne. This was their. Fifth album? Fourth album? Fifth album, I believe. Um, yes, fifth album. Jesus Christ, that took me way too long. But yeah, this is Panzerfaust, and this kind of... Um, this, to me, sounds like the bridge between the kind of early stuff, the blackened stuff, and the stuff where it sort of went a bit crusty. Um, they started adding different elements. Um, it stopped being quite as frigid and necrotic uh, if you ask me anyway, this almost sounds like a compilation album to me because we've got bits of what we'd hear on like Transylvanian Hunger uh, in the like super raw kind of lo-fi stuff um, with the like tremolo picking and everything but then we'd still get moments that kind of are a bit more mid-paced, a bit sluggish, a bit more towards that crusty sort of punky style. The track Quintessence, despite that being a really celebrated track and a great, great riff, the track just feels less like Dark Throne's previous work, if you ask me. Um, there are several moments on here where it's like, Jesus, was this all written at the same time? Um, I know uh, Varg wrote that track, and it ultimately is a black metal track, but you've, you can hear those other influences in the style. Um, yeah, this is a great album. I do like it a lot, but yeah, it just sounds a bit strange to me. It's a bit of a weird kind of follow-up to uh, Transylvanian Hunger, assuming I've got my chronology right now, I'm pretty sure I have, despite my um, kind of brain farting all over the shop. But uh, yeah, Dark Throne, don't feel they need to own really anything after Panzerfaust. There's stuff that's really good, like I like tracks here and there, like Too Old, Too Cold. Um, ah, fuck knows. There's a bunch that I do quite like. Um, however, it just, I don't know, they kind of, Green Cave Float, that was another one that always stuck with me. It's just not my style. It's not the style that I want to pick up and listen to a full fucking album from. Um, I'll just listen to bits here and there, man. Dark Throne again, though, not quite a, as drastic a shift, and I could more than happily kind of listen to bits of it, but I just don't feel the need to complete the discography, nor own all of it. Next up, I've gone with one of Poland's finest death metal acts, up there with um, Vader, of course. This is Decapitated, uh, and I don't feel the need to own anything after, um, what was the last one, the Negation. So lots of people cut off at the Negation, or at least like right before. Excuse me, Jesus Christ. Um, but I really do like the Negation, even though they went into those groove metal kind of leanings on that album, you can see exactly where they're going, even without the kind of uh, current vocalist that they've got. They shifted from Sauron to... I can't remember what the fucking guy's name is, but... Yeah, anyway, they changed vocalists for Organic Hallucinosis. What did I say? The negation. I meant Organic Hallucinosis. Some people cut off before then. Um, they changed vocalists for that album, and then they changed vocalists again. For the albums after that and they just went full kind of groove death um, I did buy the one after that I think it was Carnival is Forever and um, yeah I just wasn't really having it, it or it wasn't kind of um, 
resonating with me. I don't hate it, I can listen to it, but again, I don't feel the need to complete the discography, especially not on vinyl. I own this one, I've got, uh, sorry, Winds of Creation, I've got Nile E, I've got The Negation, and I've got Organic Hallucinosis on vinyl, and that's where I will stop, unfortunately. Um, yeah, quite a big shift from what they were doing on their early stuff. This is just pure, brutal, technical death metal. Um, just great, great stuff. One of my favorite albums of all time, yet again. Uh, if I was doing a top 100, this album would certainly be getting in there. Something I've considered doing at some point. Um, but yeah, hopefully all of that made sense, just by me getting my albums mixed up. And finally, I've got yet another perhaps obvious one. I will never, ever, ever, I guarantee, complete the Morbid Angel catalogue. For several different reasons, most of which are kind of, like, forgivable. Morbid Angel for me, I love the demos. Um, I really love the debut. I love uh, Blessed Are The Sick. And I can kind of get away with Covenant despite it kind of moving towards what we'd see on the kind of mid-era stuff as Steve Tucker came into the band a little bit later. Um, Covenant, it's got more of that kind of mid-paced, ploddy, groovy stuff that, um, like, I don't love it as much. I like the ferocity. I like David Vincent when he's got a bit of snarl to his voice um, as opposed to the kind of, I don't know, where he's kind of... I don't know how to describe it. It's like a groove metal sort of thing. It's almost got a Pantera twang to it, which I don't want in my Morbid Angel. I don't want David Vincent to sound like that. It's like a kind of a gruff yell. Uh, I, I don't really know how to describe it, but you know what I'm talking about. It's nothing like as evil and sinister as what we got on the early stuff with uh, Mike Browning and David Vincent's early stuff. Um, but then, of course, we get to Illud Divinum Saturnus or something like that um, that album I mean it's a new metal album isn't it it's, it's an attempt at new metal we've got kind of signs of what they were doing on like Domination for example on there with the mid paced stuff where they'd kind of like where the slime live that kind of style where it's a bit more groovy and a bit more kind of it's, it's less blasting, less fast, less ferocious but we've got the new metal, we've got the horrific kind of hip-hop leanings, we've got, again, another pretty lackluster vocal performance, and yeah, man, it's overproduced, it's horrid, it's not Morbid Angel, let's be honest. And then the album later on, I can't remember if there was anything after that, to be honest, um, until, what was it, Kingdoms Disdained? I think that was what it was called. And again, man, it was it was better for sure. But I mean, you, how do you get any worse? Let's be honest. How do you not recover from an album like Illud? It's horrible. Um, but yeah, it still didn't do it for me. I found it a bit tinny and a bit thin sounding. Production was a bit shoddy for me. Songwriting, not memorable at all. Um, yeah, just not a, a discography I will ever complete um, but I will continue kind of going through the bootleg shit get some live albums um, and uh, yeah I'll keep going through that but I'm not too interested in getting Covenant I might pick it up at some point but I'd have to be in the kind of swing of listening to it some more because uh, yeah it's not an album I go back to very much and that concludes that uh, there are some bands I almost added in here but I thought these ones are more kind of noticeably kind of forgettable uh, sort of after a certain point for me they're more unforgivable they're bands where just i have no desire at all like i hear about these bands like later stuff and i'm like oh like I, I switch off immediately um but yeah let me know what your thoughts are on these bands i'm sure there are a few bands there that some of you will like their later stuff morbid angel is one however could you complete their discography? Have you completed it? If so, do you like that Illud album? Um, but yeah, do let me know. I know lots of people that like the later Burzum stuff as well, which, I mean, it's not my style. I can see why it might be somebody else's. Um, but yeah, give me a few of your picks. I'm sure there are plenty out there. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much again for watching. 
go and check out uh, Modern Red's recent video, which was the uh, underrated, sorry, uh, black metal albums uh, kind of collaboration that he did with uh, Jamming Out All Badass. I'm on there. Uh, J Dog uh, appears on there. There's a bunch of us. Um, go and check it out. I did share it on my community kind of post uh, this morning. So, yeah, go and check that out. Um, but, yeah, that's it from me for today. Enough of my ramblings. Take care as always. And I will catch you in the next one.